again, and welcome to Man's Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway, and I'm Carla Garrick. <sighs> Here we and, are. And if you're watching on Facebook, we, we apologize. Might be a little, we're we don't a little, know which way. Oh, I can't. I, it's like combing <laughs> your hair in the mirror. Leading. I don't know which way would be the way to straighten us out. Uh, but welcome back to Man's Talk. Here we are. It is summer Late hot. July. Hot. So so. Can someone explain to me how it's almost August? I don't know. Like, I was like, where this the happens, You know what's funny? <laughs> I think it happens every year. So this is the way my brain works. It, April comes, and we start to think spring, right? Right. And then May is spring. And then June is, we think, still spring, when June is really summer. Summer. And then all of a sudden, July comes and goes. And then we're like, what? How does it August? And, and now, now yeah. I'm starting to see things we can do I this will, fall. It, yeah, I'm you trying know. to... We're, I'm resurfacing. I'm redoing the surface of my deck yeah. because, like, there was a hole in it. So that's keeping me quite busy because I would like the that. The side deck at the kitchen door? Yes. Okay. Because there was a big, like, literally, like, this big of a hole. Like, <laughs> somebody was going to get her. And it was old. I mean, there's lots. Right. And it'll be prettier and all this stuff. But um, I'm trying to get some things done. Even though, even if summer does dwindle down, it's like it just needs still to be done. I'm hashing back. Um shrubbery my god these shrubs on the side of my house are just out of control Ugh. but it's so hot it is super hot out like i don't think i can't even imagine being in miami like today a friend oh of mine god. marion ward is at a conference in miami today and i was reading something that the water now granted it was just five foot like it was shallow water okay but like 40 four miles south of miami so not far but far was 101 degrees the water mm. because so, it's just blaring constantly and you know what 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 is water boil at oh a lot a lot a one, a, a, the water temperature that they were referencing was similar to a hot tub hmm. and i was like this oh wow oh uh, so uh yeah so so hot <laughs> water i mean like, so, i have no idea there was a whole bunch of people that just so, um, yeah, this whole climate change stuff. So they just got caught. I guess there was a map or some some push went out and they were talking about this one study and all the temperatures were exaggerated by 10 degrees. Yes. And it's like, what why? Um, they're I doing mean, some interesting stuff, I guess, in China. It's, you know, that joke about you can dig all the way down yeah. to China or something. So uh, in China, they're actually boring down the farthest it's ever been. It's going to be like miles. Yeah. Um, so that they can extract the cores of all. I think they're trying to get to the mantle, mag magna, mantle, whatever. And I was like, oh, God, what's going to happen? Yeah, going to like bore all, all the way to China and then like the world's going to tip or something. Uh, but yeah, but yeah it is so. hot. And I, I, it is weird that it's almost August. I was thinking about it. But I always try to remind myself that August is always hot. So, I mean, my favorite time to go to the ocean is like the second week in August. So there's still oh, that. August is and then yeah. September goes all over yeah, the place, true. right? Kids go back to school and it's blaring hot because they always complain that you know we can't have the poor poor childrens without the air conditioning. Right. Um, so then they th and that's always at the beginning of the school year. Where did I just read they were going to institute air conditioning for the first time? And I have to say, I I I, I was sort of like. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable request. <laughs> well, I forget it is, if it was like you know, air school one of those, buses yeah, one or, of those weird, oh, you know. UPS trucks. It was UPS trucks because the Teamsters yeah. just got a sweet, sweet, yeah. sweet, sweet, sweet deal. I kind of had wished everyone yeah. was going to strike and yeah, then we could just kind of yeah. figure it all FedEx out the way it needs to it be. You know, like well, exactly. It's kind of like, I don't know if this is your impression, but for me, the the the... The postal service basically delivers junk mail I don't want. I do get some of my Amazon delivered by the post office. I did see that is starting Everyone's, to well, happen. I, it depends on what I buy and where I'm right. buying it from. I mean, I think I get my Amazon from pretty much all the carriers. I get it from the post office. I mean, um, honestly, if Amazon wanted to privatize the the postal service yeah. and actually use... Just deliver, they'd probably get... Because, I mean, it is at least 10 to 1 <laughs> in terms of something I want versus, yeah. like, when the Amazon truck comes, you're like, yay, everything that I want yeah. is coming now. Yeah, and you, then I go right. check the mail, the mail and I'm like, political oh. political mail and some junk. You know. I mean, not that that's well, some junk. Well, political mail's junk. I'm just saying. Junk, I'm junk. saying completely, like, not even directed towards me junk. Yeah. Um, anyways. So we had a great weekend. I saw you at the, the NHLA yep. Liberty that Dinner. Was nice. that was so good. that was New Hampshire Liberty Alliance had their big dinner yep. on Saturday 20 night. Years. 
It's crazy. I mean, you know, it does explain where the gray hair is coming from. 20 years, though. I was like, that's crazy. It is 20 years. And it was sort of interesting because they were explaining. I mean, I knew Michelle Dumas was involved way back. Mm -hmm. But I actually forgot that Rick, Rich Tommaso was uh, was uh, one of the founders. Mm -hmm. So he gave a little speech. And Keith Murphy wrote the bylaws. Uh, Keith Murphy wrote the bylaws. He was there. We were up at Murphy's. Uh, James Bovard, Jim Bovard, great writer. He was the keynote speaker. Yeah, he talked good. about the um, censorship and yeah. the attack on stuff. You know, it's fascinating to me. Do you know that journalists literally do not seem to know the level of censorship that went on over the past three years during COVID? And I don't I, know how. I, I don't can't know how decide. You can't is it is it ob obtuseness? I mean, genuinely. Like, I mean, I'm banned so off Twitter, so I can't even have those fights well, there. Twitter, but... which is now X. What was I that? Know. I don't even know but what is going on. But they're still calling it tweets. So I mean, so I don't get it. It just none of it makes uh, makes any I don't get it. An, any sense. So I saw some someone because now I'm like trapped on Facebook and I'm getting my news I five know. days late. I know. I know. <laughs> Maybe I'll start I depend another on Dan, stock Dan account. Gets the stuff. Um, oh. So we did have filings last week. Yes. Um, that wrapped up on Friday. Um, you know, no, there were some surprises, but. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't file for anything. Did I you? didn't either. Yeah. I, I'm, like somebody asked me between that and oh my god, can I tell you if one more person asks me why I haven't gotten behind a presidential candidate, and I'm like, because it's early and I'd like to see some debate. I'd like to see a conversation. And then now with um, Sununu not running for governor, you've got Kelly Aya and um, Chuck Moore so far saying for sure they're running on the Republican side. And you've got Cindy Warmington or whatever her yeah. name is. The fact that I can't remember what her name is probably doesn't bode well. Is she, she she's a senator now, or she did she come senator. from the EC? She's no, she's a senator. Okay, I think. I think. The, right? She might be, or she might be an executive committee. I don't I remember. Don't she's somebody that we don't remember her name or what she is. <laughs> and then Joyce Craig. So I can't help but I'm sorry. Did You're you gonna, see that interview? Yes, I'm going to say this until the elections are over because. Sweetheart, you are not ready to run for governor. One, you have been a terrible mayor. This city is a hot mess. I was just, when we're walking in today, I'm like, okay, the beggars aren't even just on the corners. You got the guy who I do give him credit for setting up stuff to sell to get his money, but you and I can't set up on the corner and sell stuff without getting in trouble. So, so I do like that dude if we're talking about the one on, on Granite, Granite Street because that, the first time I saw him, I was like, man, this feels like back home. This feels like Africa, right? A guy with an umbrella with a cooler. Yeah. And at least he's like hustling, right? Like right. there's I, I do water or something, right? The people who are just standing around, I mean, the one, the, the guy today, and I, I did wish him a happy birthday, but, you know, he had a sign that said veteran, this homeless. Guy the street here. But it's my 65th often. birthday right. today. I'm pretty sure I didn't make a special sign just for today, uh, uh, but he's out there. I've seen him multiple times. I've seen him a lot of times. And it was like, the first time I saw the birthday but side. But I'm like, but he's not even on a corner. He's like literally in front of next door to that Thai place. Right. And I'm like, okay, when does it end? When does the panhandling and the begging stop and we get, you know. So so anyway, I mean, the long and the short of it is Joyce Craig should not be governor because if her track record is scaled up from Manchester to the whole state, we're looking at a really bad trend. And you have to go um, out and watch the WMUR close-up interview from Sunday morning with her. Because you I, keep... I, I mean, Tammy, to be fair, right? So I do have empathy for anyone. Like, if you're being interviewed, sometimes things can go pear-shaped. Yes. Sometimes you lose your train of thought. Yes. I mean, certainly in that NBC interview with me, sometimes the interviewers ask these long I, questions that aren't really questions yes. where they're rambling and giving you an opinion and you're like, oh, was there a question there? So I do understand things can go wrong. Yes. And I have seen, you know, people I know give terrible interviews. Yes. But this, this was really bad. Was remarkably so I, bad. You know what? From the get-go, first of all, it's close-up. We all know, and I've never... Like, you know the format. Well, I was going to say, I've <laughs> never done close up but i know it's a one take and it's, they, they don't cut it they don't clip it you sit down you do your 10 minute or whatever interview and that's that she couldn't get out of 
hi, like, hello. Uh, so she stumbled, which, okay, that's just nerves. But then she was then like, she can, was I like can I do it over? over? But it's like, like, lie. Like, no, we don't do that. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my God. And she's been on close-up before. So, t- sweetie, are you that stupid? Like, so then she goes on. Then she starts talking, which was even worse. So <laughs> she, um, just in case you don't know what Joyce Craig thinks are the priorities um she says there's a lot at stake a lot there's a lot at stake which i agree which is why you should be voting for whoever the republican nominee is um she has a track winner record of winning very difficult elections which i thought well kudos to victoria sullivan for me because otherwise she'd just say a win- difficult election yes she beat ted gatsis but she apparently thinks she's run in many difficult elections so i guess victoria scared her a little more than they than Ray Buckley would have you believe. But um she specifically keeps talking about we need to um use improve the public schools and increase services and then many many times affordable and produce housing. and protect a women's a- woman's access to abortion. I know at one point um he asked her about access to abortion because she says when they if there's one in thing you want to repeal about Sununu's tenure which mind you the abortion most is legal well, in New Hampshire it is legal up to 24 weeks it is the same as any well, other friggin place any political person uh, with an ounce of political know-how governor Sununu like him or not is literally the most popular governor in the country has like still huge support and huge favorability ratings. So when somebody says, what are you going to repeal about Sununu? If you're politically savvy, you say, well, I think Governor Sununu, you know, did a good job. However, oh no, she says, um, we need to, um, reverse access. We need to bring back access to abortion, which in New Hampshire is completely accessible. She says government plays, I thought you'd like this, government plays no role in decision, in the decision. Um, and it should be the woman, her doctor, and her family because these are very complex decisions. And I thought, wasn't that funny you think that those bodily mm. decisions should be made by the patient, the doctor, mm. and their family. But, but yet, when someone's going to force you to take a brand new experimental product from not, the company that has paid not. the largest criminal fines yes. in the history of the world for fraud, for lying to you about so, products, then she is it's okay. Obviously, only an abortion. And he asks her specifically, do you think that um, aborting a viable child like at 34 weeks, which is way beyond viability, I'm talking yeah, 10, that's a baby. 10, 12 weeks beyond viability. Um, she said per- it's a personal decision and every woman has a right to s- decide because these are complex Oh, so decisions. Joyce Craig is pro Late to baby abortion. side? Pro- right. Uh, She is 100%. And she mentions it numerous times. So this is so interesting to me, you know, because I do think there's this incredibly interesting (laughs) dynamic, okay, that has happened. Because there's, there's, the the, the my body, my choice is actually a a solid self-ownership philosophical. across the board position right. to, to, to operate on, right? So then if we apply that and we apply it consistently, then we should apply it across, across all things. Mm-hmm. That means, you know, even though I'm pro-life, if someone chooses to have an abortion, I'll judge them. I might try and provide alternatives mm-hmm. and other educational choices. But if that's what they cho- choose to do, if you choose to murder your baby, then I mean, I guess I have to live with that choice. If I'm going to extend self-ownership, meaning you're allowed to own yourself or your decisions to us. So with women's rights, it's fascinating because what they've done is they've instilled like 98% of the message, right? Like the self-ownership message, but then still somehow managed in the last three years to then take that argument and just turn it on its head when it suits them so i guess my question to 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 people is how can you hold how how can joyce craig hold a vaccine mandate and infanticide in her head together in a way that makes like 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 cognitive sense so either you're dumb or (laughs) you're um insane or you're evil because these things don't actually makes sense when you parse it out so so the other the other thing 
Which I thought... Stupid or evil. So... Just saying. Um... He asked her about EFAs, Education Freedom Accounts, and she said, oh, she would absolutely roll them back. Why? Well, and I'm like, okay, and he, she My said, body, my choice, my education, my no, choice? No, Ooh. not your choice in that, because she believes public tax dollars, which I think is funny, because what, are there other tax dollars that I don't know about? Do they go to private or, right? Public tax dollars should go towards public schools. Well, you know what? If the public schools were doing a good job, then parents wouldn't need to take their children and put okay, them in public alternative Public tax schools. dollars can go to public schools if people who don't send their kids to public don't schools to no longer have to pay exactly. taxes. Um, she goes on to say all these wonderful things that they've done in Manchester, including decreasing tax, uh, class sizes, which cracks me up because you didn't decrease class sizes on your own. You decreased class sizes because students People are stopped leaving going to in school. Groves. People stopped sending their kids to the public schools. Um, when asked if she would end EFAs for existing kids, because keep in mind that education freedom accounts are for the poorest of our society. They're not for the rich and famous. They are for the lower income people who really don't have access to alternative schools because they can't afford the tuition. Um, she totally evades the question and does not say that that she would leave them and grandfather them in. She, no doubt, she was mincing words and avoiding the question. Um, so basically, I mean, I, it was just like insane because he did say, well, so what did you accomplish? You know, Governor Sununu listed out all his successes. What would you say you accomplished? She said jobs. And I was like, jobs? So is the government creating well, jobs She now? said, when well, to talk jobs? about how we Manchester was the only city that applied for this for, these federal grants, and then we got $44 million in federal grant money that we, we were creating 7,000 new jobs in the mill yard with the, all the technology with Army and everything. And I thought... What we? We uh, is not the government. We is the pe the so, businesses. So if it's army and that's A R M I, yep. that is Dean Cayman. Dean Cayman. I'm pretty sure it's it's, it's he, it is yeah. a public private um but it, but initiative. But without the private in it part of it, there would be no initiative. I mean, so I, we can't claim that. I will tell you, I am uh, I, I'm eager to put on my investigative reporting hat a little bit and go look a little bit. Who in New Hampshire received PPP loans? Yeah, oh yeah. That would because be a fun when you project. start looking at the amount of money that was just kind of pushed out, there are a lot of people that did Well, I'll be honest. Really I, I, I remember well. seeing some some businesses firsthand. So oh. I could see, you know, the tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars in free money that they were given. And then the the ability to not have to repay it that bar was might have sound might have sounded significant. It was really low because you could totally claim all sorts of stuff hardship oh, that I mean, really didn't exist. And that was my money and your money and your money. And we just like threw it out like candy. Hey, candy at a parade. You know, I, I, I yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Um. So on the election stuff. Yes. So we've got a four way race for mayor. Basically, three Democrats and a Republican, so that'll be interesting. Um, we'll see. Um, Alderman at large, there are two seats, and there are four people running. Will Infantine and Joe Lavasser are running on the Republican side. Um, Joe is, would be the only incumbent running, so that's interesting. Although Will has served before, he, right? Um, I don't think Will's ever been an Alder, I don't know. I never I don't can remember. remember. Uh, Will's, I, I Will's a state rep, so I mean, he's been. To, I think it, he's been an alderman because I almost feel like I met him when I used to do police ones? police accountability mm. work down at um, City Hall. He would let me know with I a raised see, eyebrow. I see that Elizabeth Moreau and Brittany Ping have stepped up to run for school, school committee at yeah. large, which is also interesting. Um, I don't know if Peter Argolopoulos is an incumbent. I don't think he is. Who isn't running there? I don't know. Look, it's too confusing. Um, there's a three-way race for Alderman in Ward 1. Chris Morgan's a Republican running against Kevin Shepard, who ran the Parks Department, which I thought was interesting. Mm. And, and another guy, they're both undeclared. Um, Ward 1 does have a Republican running for school board. Oh. Dan Goonan's running for former fire chief, is running for Ward 2 Alderman. Um, interesting that he comes up as an undeclared voter now because he used to be a Republican voter, so I don't know what that leans. Mm. Um, 
There is, there's a bunch of people, but uh, Ward 5 has a four-way race for Alderman with Kathy Paquette as the only Republican, so that'll be interesting. Who's running in Ward 11? We're not there yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Chrissy Cantor and Ken Tassie are both running for re-election in nice. Ward 6. And um, Chrissy just won the special yep. election And, in and Maxine Mosley's who's going to try to take her out, but like, honey, you couldn't even, the Democrats usually do so much better than right. special elections. And Dan Bergeron is the one who, last time around, forgot to get to City Hall on time, so that says a lot. <laughs> um, Ed Sapienza is running for re-election in Ward 8, and Mark Warden dropped his name on the school board race, nice. so that'll be interesting. Uh, um, Ward 9 has Jim Burkish, pro uh, you know, I don't know how he win won in the first place, but there is a Republican, Jose Mart, running against him. Bob Baines running for school committee. Nobody bothered. Don't even bother. Um, there is races in Ward... Um, Ward 10. Ward 11 has a four-way race for Alderman. You've got Russ Ouellette. Is he the guy who literally hasn't shown up to anything no, no, forever? That, no, Russ Ouellette was the guy who, um, he's undeclared. He was the guy who got in trouble a while back who was alcoholic and um, kept a woman with, against her will in in. It, supposedly in his truck at like Wendy's or something. Um, Nicole Leapley. <laughs> Keep it classy, New Hampshire. Nicole Leapley was on the school board, so she's going to try to win the alderman seat. So okay. those are the, that. Then there's a Republican, Norm Vincent. Okay. So um, met him, seems nice, everything. And Andre Rosa. Nice. Now, Andre's run a few times, so it'll be interesting to see who... It'll, it'd be interesting. To I think see. Andre would be a great older he man. He really he's, would. He's, he's like a, he's he's like me. Like he, he can work across yeah. the aisle. I mean, I think he's the biggest likeable. hurdle is whoever's going to get through the primary. Yeah. Because only two of those, and sometimes getting through the primary is harder than getting through the general. Um, <clears throat> new people for school committee: Liz O'Neill, who's a Democrat, and. Gordon Hayner, who's a Republican. And you um, said that charter question will not be on the There is no, there are no questions charts. at this point okay. on the ballot. Um, in the Ward 12 race, so I can't f tell if this person in the school committee race, there's a Camille Craffey, C-R-A-F-F-E-Y. Um, I looked up her address and stuff. She bought that house in April of 2021. But she's not on the old, the voter list I have access to. So I was like, so how did you not vote in 2022 or 21, 22 or 23 in Manchester? Right? And okay. then, but you'd like, you know, I don't know. I don't know the story. Um, but I did. I was glad to see that Kelly Thomas, who was on the school committee, it put her name in for Alderman. She would be awesome. She was good. Um, so that's that. So there are lots of lots And those of elections are in November. September something. It's the primary. It's, it's usually the, I think it's the first Tuesday after the first Monday or something like that. Um, and then the first, the same thing in November. Um, we'll follow, we'll bring that up more as time gets close. But you should look into who's running in your ward because it's important to know who's running and what they stand for. And it's and not honestly, easy to get information. I mean, as much as we have super access to information, voters kind of have to seek it out because there's it's very excuse me it's very difficult as a as a um candidate to get your information to the voter i mean it it's amazing how it seems like it should have gotten easier and i really feel like it's almost gotten harder because well so it's interesting uh you know when when uh we had RFK up at, at uh, Pork Fest and just kind of looking at the landscape of elections and all of this stuff. Because city elections are nonpartisan, right? So mm. it's kind of like, you know, it's more the candidate than the person. But then, you know, obviously people know this yeah. person's a Democrat, this person, whatever, right? But I think we should move towards a post-party politics because I actually think that what has happened because of the way we get data now so the parties have, let's say the Democrats, I think, have like 28% of New Hampshire's registered voters mm -hmm. and Republicans have 26 or 23% or something. It's slightly lower, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have this massive pool of independents in the middle. Undeclareds. Undeclareds. So we have, on these sides, people have lists and they're like, oh, I know you subscribe to the NRA and you, you know, buy baby clothes yeah. and whatever, right? Like, and over here, you know, I, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um, because of this, and because we have these lists, I think the targeted marketing has become much more polarized because you're like talking to those people, yeah. right? Like you As can appeal to, to, to instead of just being like, hey, actually, I have to be able to say my ideas in a way that 
most people will find palatable. There is, you could sell something, you can sell an idea in different ways, yes. right? And you can sell it to your group who hates that group and then you're just making more hate or you can figure out a way to be like, hey guys, wouldn't this be better for all mm -hmm. of us? And I'm really tired of that. Well, I, like, but I think the reason why, like I agree, it does seem like we, I mean, and I don't always agree with the model that says target these people, don't target those people, or just target the people in the middle. But it, it comes down to resources because, you know, you've run for office. You only have a limited window of time and you only have a limited, I mean, as Republicans anyways, we only have a limited amount of resources and dollars to, to use towards things. I mean, if we were the Democrats, we'd just, you know, be getting our money funneled in from George Soros or whoever. <laughs> um, so maybe it's a little bit different for them. But it is a lot of times that targeting is just... Um, because of limited resources. And now I don't know, like I said, I don't always agree with the targeting because the met, if it was that easy, I would, I would win all the time and you'd win all the time because we'd target those people and we'd win. So there's obviously more to it. Right. And, but, but it's because those groups are too small and right. I don't think anyone has actually figured out beyond name recognition, Who how to get those yeah. undeclared. Right. Yeah. And name recognition is literally the name the, of the game, <laughs> the name of the game, because ultimately it's like, people can't remember, do I like you or do I hate right. you? They just know they know your name yep. and somehow that makes people vote for you. Right. It's crazy. It is crazy. I did get asked to run for L LP governor, I said no. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was my big news. Do you um, know if, um, did they get the patio finished at Parkside? I know they got, they raised it enough is. money. It is, yeah. To, so okay, so we, awesome. uh, Louie and Patrick and Mari yeah. were out there last weekend, Saturday morning. Nice. We finished it. Uh, they came over for breakfast afterwards. I think they still have to pound, the pound uh, yeah. do the pounding. Camping. They yeah. still have to do the pounding, um, because on but August most of it is 5th, late. Is that this weekend? That's not this weekend. That's <laughs> next weekend. August 5th at 10 a.m. They have um, We Heart Wildflowers Craft and Garden Day at the gardens at Parkside uh, in West Manchester. Um, that's put on by We Heart West, who does a ton of great things, cleaning our parks, cleaning our streets. Mm, Louis and I spent things. all of Sunday picking up trash down by Piscataway River Park well, again. The uh, big homeless camp that yeah. was right on the trail is yeah, gone. It, they kind of moved down to oh, the river, Dan's, but I but but at least you can't see Dan it. Dan did just... mention that because I know you had mentioned yeah. it, and he took Jenny and he took Jenny off the leash to see how she would do because we're trying to see if she'll listen. You know, yeah. we know she doesn't go far, <laughs> but will she listen? And he, she did because he was like I was okay with her being there and I was okay with her being there and she went in the beach and went in the water but then he said then we got across the bridge or wherever yep. he goes and I saw the tents and I was like okay come here because yeah. you don't know what the reaction is going to be when dogs are dogs oh, yeah so that's that and and actually I mean some of them actually have pretty big loose pit bulls that right. aren't it's on nice. leashes not so good. you know uh, Anyways. but that public taxpayers money that public taxpayer money Oh. Hard at work, taking care of the homeless, resuscitating the drug addicts. Um, I over mean, over and over and well, over and over yes, and over. Yes, at some stage, different decisions need to be made. But we have been instructed to wrap up, so we will do that uh, on the double. <laughs> yep. um, enjoy the weather. Get outside. Enjoy this because, like Carla mentioned earlier, August is right around the corner. Um, we'll be back next week. I'm sure it'll be warm still. Take care. Bye.